Okay, so let's move on to the lead guitar tones. There are three lead guitar tracks in this song. There are two that are sort of like in harmony with each other. They're uh, they're in octaves, really. It's just uh, an instrumental lead riff that comes after the first chorus and the third chorus into the outro. And then there's a guitar solo. So let's see what that sounds like uh, as is, just using my Amp Designer stock brown stack setting. So there's a lot of like pinch harmonics and squeals and things like that that are not quite coming through uh, with the Amp Designer plugin. And so I'm once again going to use my Neural DSP Petrucci Amp Sim plugin. But I'm going to show you a trick where you can add compression before the Amp Sim to make the tone a bit thicker and a bit more reactive to pinch harmonics and things like that, just to make the input signal of the guitar a little bit more hot. So let's start with the solo here. I'm gonna take the amp designer off of this and I'm gonna throw the archetype Petrucci amp on here. And while the stock setting is pretty cool and has some cool effects on it, I don't like adding time-based effects inside of the amp plugin itself. Rather, I like to add those separately on aux tracks, but let's give this patch a shot. Yeah, so some really cool effects on there. Um, we're actually going to get rid of all of that. So uh, let's get rid of the gate. We don't need gate on lead guitar. I'm going to get rid of the doubler. The doubler is not something that you want to use in a mix because it's going to make that track very uh, not mono compatible. So we'll add our own stereo width effects uh, later. Let's go into the effects here. Let's see. None of these are on. Let's go over here. That's just EQ. That's a volume pedal, and then here we go. We've got a, a chorus uh, that's off, a delay that's on, and then the reverb's off. So really, it was just that delay that was on. So I've pulled back the gain a little bit. I like more bass and mids in my leads, although we are going to sort of filter out some of the bottom end a bit. But another trick I like to do sometimes when I find that a DI signal is not like really super hot, one thing you can do is just pull up the gain on the region itself, and that will increase the input signal going into the amp sim which in some ways will make the signal a bit more hot. But sometimes what I find is adding a compressor before the amp sim actually helps to make the signal a little thicker sounding and a little more dense sounding, and it just helps those pinch harmonics to really come out. So I'm going to go to the Studio FET for this. Uh, turn off auto gain as always. You can apply uh, soft distortion here, and that's going to saturate the DI tone a little bit more as well. So let's just listen to the DI, and I'm going to try to dial in just a little bit of compression, not a ton, and then I'm going to blend in uh, the dry signal as well.
So even the DI now is thicker and has more body to it. Although I did add a little bit of input gain increase. So I'm going to pull down the output gain as well. You don't want the DI signal to be like vastly louder than the original, just because that can make the amp tone sound really nasty and fuzzy. Like your input signal is too hot. And also, if you find that there are like low end rumble and noise issues, you can try adding a filter here at this stage before the amp sim as well. Let's hear all that bottom end noise. Let's try to get rid of that. All right, now let's try it with the amp. Yeah, so it's a little more dense, a little fuller sounding with the compressor. And then let's hear that with everything back in the mix. Cool. Yeah, you can really hear the pinch harmonics are, are coming out super easy now. And uh, yeah, I like that lead tone. It really pops. Um, I want to listen one more time and kind of zoom in here and make sure there aren't any notes that are kind of out of time. I seem to hear a few little things that are a little out of time to my ear. Maybe we can use a little flex time to correct that. Yeah, let's fix that. Let's turn on flex time, turn on flex on that track. We'll use polyphonic uh, for this. And again, I don't really want to like be snapping things to the grid. I just rather want to make sure that these things are landing where they need to land. So I'm like looking at the downbeat here in the rhythm guitar and bass, and that note was coming in a little early. Now, I could just make this like straight eighth notes like this, but that's just going to take all the soul out of it. I like that kind of like rubato almost like these are slightly slow, but just I wanted to make sure this note was right on the downbeat there. So here's another one where it's just not quite where it needs to be. So I'll just kind of nudge that over. Yeah, a couple of little weird things there. You know, I'm not a big fan of guitarists who go through and they just make their guitar parts like perfectly quantized to the grid. It just sounds unnatural to me. You know, they, they start sounding like a guitar synthesizer instead of a guitarist. So I'm trying to do this just very gently, you know, things that are slightly off the grid. You know, I, it's part of the, the soul and the groove and the, the mojo of, of the solo. You know, you start quantizing everything directly to the grid. All of a sudden it loses its soul. It, it loses like the emotional delivery, I guess. Try pulling that note out a little longer. Yeah, there's some other low end rumble in the solo as well. So we may need to pull up that filter a bit as well. I'm a little ahead here, somewhere in this fast spot. All right, that's on the downbeat. That's close enough. Yeah, right there's a little weird. And I don't even know that I can do anything about it, really. That's a little ahead. That's on point. So maybe let's try just doing that. Is 
And then the ending here. I kind of rush it a little bit. I think it starts and ends in the right spot, but yeah, I think I'm rushing a little bit, rushing, and then like here's fine. So let's try pulling that over. Let's try pulling that over, and hopefully that'll correct the rushing there. There we go. Let's try that as well. And I'll just leave that there. I won't even bother bouncing it in place or anything like that. I think that's uh, I think that's good. Okay, so let's move on to the two lead parts. Once again, I'm just going to copy over my Archetype uh, Petrucci X plugin here. So let's get rid of these Amp Designer plugins. And a little trick you can do is if you need to copy a channel strip setting from one over to another, you can select that channel, click setting, and then you can go up to copy channel strip setting or option command C. And then you can go to those other plugins and to paste the entire channel strip setting, including the volume and pan, you can select paste channel strip setting. But if you just want to paste in the plugins, you can use this option instead. And there we go. We've pasted in those plugins. Now, I don't want the exact same tone on these leads as I do in the solo. In fact, on the album, I kind of filtered this part of it. It's almost like a background lead. And honestly, here I may take out the compressor and I may even dial back the gain a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that on both of these. I want to hear a lot more mids, a lot less bass. We're actually going to filter out the bass even more, and then I'll pull up the presence. Yeah, you know what? Even less gain. Okay, I'm gonna move the EQs after the plugins, and let's just focus on one of these for now. What I really wanna do here is I want it to have sort of like a band past kind of sound to it. So I'm gonna cut out quite a bit of the low end and a little bit of the top end. And then to compensate, I'm going to bring in a little bit of the low end right before the roll-off slope, and I'll do the same over here for the high end. You know what? I take it back. That's probably too much presence. Let's put it over here somewhere. And with the EQ copied over to the other guitar, let's give that a shot. And you know what? Um, let's see. Archetype Petrucci mono to stereo. So this EQ needs to be loaded in stereo as well. There we go. It was in mono before the amp. Then when I dragged it over, it stayed in mono. So now we, you can see we have stereo tracks. Let's go ahead and make these stereo panners. And remember, when you are working in pre-fader mode like this, or really any time, not just when you're working in pre-fader mode, when you start panning things with stereo pan, and the signal coming out of the plugins coming into the meter is a little more hot. You may have to compensate for that to make sure that you don't clip. So I'm going to pull down the EQ plugins here just to give us a little bit of buffer. And if I need more volume, I can just pull it up here. Now, if you want the localization of a track in the stereo field to be a bit more narrow, maybe a little bit more focused, you can drag up and down right here on the green bar, and this will actually narrow the stereo width for that track at the same time. So if I wanted to make these really narrow left and right lead guitars, panned left and maybe a little more right, 
just like so, and I want most of the energy to be out front, I can do that. Especially since my rhythm guitars are way off to the side, that'll create a little more space on the side uh, for these leads to come through. Yeah, there we go. And then at the end, it's the same lead that just takes us to the outro. The outro, we will eventually fade out later on. I almost feel like the rhythm guitars need a little bit of a, a mid-high range boost. Okay, let's put all of our leads in a track stack. We'll put that in a summing stack. I'll just call this leads. There we go. Now we are going to be adding time-based effects to the leads and to some of these other tracks as well. We will do that in the next video where we talk about using sends and time-based effects. And I'm gonna show you my sort of mix structure for each of these track stacks. The reason why I'm grouping these all together is each one of these is gonna have its own set of time-based effects to you know choose from and to, and to utilize. So that's what we'll do in the next video. We'll talk about using sends, time-based effects, reverbs, delays, and chorus effects. And so we'll be adding quite a bit to the lead guitars. We'll be adding some reverb to the drums to fatten up some of those. And we'll see, maybe even a little bit of room reverb on the rhythm guitars as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.